Uh, welcome to Zipline. I've got a great show here today. Just the awesome stuff going on in technology in Indiana. Uh, Scott Abbott's really been a buddy of mine for going on two years now, and got a very unique resume in what um, what's going on in the technology world in Indiana. Both sides of the spectrum, both small business, corporate America, and even somewhere in between. Now, Scott, give us a little bit of background on on your technology career, how it's evolved, and where you're at now. Great. Well, thanks for having me, Tony. Good to see you. So, yeah, I've been in technology uh, for over 20 years, most of that in Indiana, um, hardware, software, professional services uh, in the corporate business to business enterprise space. I've uh, been very blessed to work with the IBM, the Microsofts and the Oracles. And as you know, I do quite a bit with uh, early stage venture capital backed uh, technology companies here in Indiana. And today, uh, really focused on two things. One, I work with a firm called Maru Networks. Right is a leader in Wi-Fi access technology. And again, as you know, I, I'm involved with a couple of early stage startup companies. Uh, Maru's got kind of a unique value proposition, doesn't it? I mean, they're, they're in a space there where they're, they're beating it out with some of the big dogs. And, and really, I think when I look at what, what Maru has compared to what a Cisco or some of those other big players have, it's, it's really kind of a leapfrog technology, and it's because, like a lot of technology co companies, they were built in a different paradigm, and that paradigm, that way of thinking, has actually allowed them to jump over the competition. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, what's hot today is mobility, right? Wireless, all the, the devices, density. We've heard the acronym BYOD, bring your own device, machine to machine, M to M. Um, and a lot of those companies you mentioned earlier that have been around kind of backed into the space. Maru... Uh, was a leader in this space, started about 10 years ago, and, and, and had the foresight to know that mobility, wireless, um, device density, and diversity was going to be hot. So kind of one of these niche, best-kept secret companies, right. um, thousands of installations worldwide, but they're niche, and, and all they do is the software, the hardware, and, and the solutions, if you will, around ensuring that uh, organizations are running uh, mission-critical, fault-tolerant, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi access. And like those companies, like a lot of those companies, uh, those big, te those technology companies that are those hidden secrets that all of a sudden have grown, what they've done it on is, is really on, a, on their ability to deliver. And they've done that in a, in a unique space in higher ed. And now they're starting to branch out. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of companies trying to get into the space, right, for a whole host of reasons. Uh, Maru, again, thanks to their niche, this is all they do. So it's kind of cool to be so focused and singularly minded around, again, the Wi-Fi access that powers today's fuzzy terminology, BYOD, machine to machine, you know, the whole cloud managed services, right? Without without wireless and Wi-Fi, you know, that stuff doesn't work. So you got to have great Wi-Fi access technology. And you've seen some changes over the last decade as I, and we've kind of gone back and forth and what is the, what, mobility is not just an option anymore. It's really a requirement for doing business, right? And is that, what, where, where do you see this thing going? Where's the vision for where you see technology and how it's being applied in the mobile, mobile environment? Yeah, so you're right. It's not just the technology, managed services, cloud, mobility. It really is socioeconomic. Um, it's about doing uh, more with less, uh, being very lean, very focused, agile, so the whole uh, mobility movement is, is really a socioeconomic. It's a lifestyle choice, right? It's not just a, a business driver or a corporate strategy. It really is uh, embedded in the very fabric of how, how we live as a society today. Now, Scott, what is the one, if we could get it to drill down to one thing, what is the one significant advantage Maru has over the, the, other, uh, the other people in this space, the other big, big horses in this space? What's the one differentiator, you would say? Yeah, not to get too technical, but architecturally, there's three or four fundamental differences. Uh, in Maru's case, um, the network is in charge of that Wi-Fi environment versus the device, which is really critical. Uh, it's also got security and management and the bells and whistles and features and functions that really provide peace of mind and comfort that the Wi-Fi is up and running 24 by 7 by 365. So... Not to get too technical, again, all Maru does is Wi-Fi access in mission-critical, fault-tolerant, needed environments. And, and with that single-minded focus and the depth and breadth of the technology platforms, 
um, it's got a pretty good uh, position in the market. So, so Scott, I got time to ask you one more question, and I really want—I think it's a great opportunity to kind of take you a little bit off the maroon piece and talk talk to us about the vision of where you see Indiana going. I mean, you know, we we've witnessed two uh, IPOs in in one month. You know, with Angesis and Exact Target. Um, you were part of a large one, uh, you know, uh, more almost more more than five years ago. Where where do you see? Are there more opportunities like that for us? Is are we really in a hotbed now? Where where do you see the vision of Indiana Technology? Yeah, you know, I think you know it's it's a it's kind of a yin yang thing going on, right? There's definitely a, a phenomenal um, opportunity to, to to come up with great new technology. Again, I'm I'm a big fan, a little biased towards all mobility, wireless. Right. Um, you know, uh, platform, if you will. At the same time, we got to be a little careful, I think, right? The world doesn't need 75 different flavors of, of an app. Um, right. we got to be careful, um, whether it's IBM, Oracle, or startup small companies, that technology has a purpose. Right. Uh, the business generates an ROI for both the employees to get paychecks and if invested in, yeah. the investors to get their money back. So today, everything matters, right? Tony, you know this. So, you know, if you're going to make something – Make it because people want to use it. They want to buy it, and you got business behind it. But absolutely, it's a great time to be coming up with great technology that works and serves a purpose. Scott Abbott, you've been zip. Thanks, Tony.